Okay, so now that you have memorized all the notes between the first and the fifth fret, let's take that further and go up to the next section of the neck on the bass, learning all the notes. Now, this should be a little bit easier now if you have all this memorized because the pattern remains the same no matter where you are on the bass. So, when, let's start at the fifth fret. On the fifth fret, on each string we have, uh, on the E string we have the note A. On the A string we have the note D. On the D string we have the note G. And then on the G string we have the note C. So now if we start moving up from that fret, it will just go just like the rest of it is. So starting with the A, we move up a half step, we get an A sharp or a B flat. Then we get a B. And then we have that strange relationship between B and C where C is right next to it. There's no C flat, there's no B sharp, they're just right next to each other. And then we get to a C sharp or a D flat. Then there is a D. And then there is a D sharp or an E flat. And then an E. And once we've gotten to E, we're at the octave of the string. Everything starts repeating over from that point on. And the same is true on all the other strings. So I'm going to work through it quickly now just to get the rough idea. But you have the chart in front of you and you can memorize this and practice this uh, over time. So you just know where every note is on the entire neck. Starting on the D string, I'm sorry, on the A string, fifth fret, we have a D. We go D sharp, E, E sharp. Oh, there's no such thing as an E sharp. I tricked you. There's an F. The E and the F has that strange relationship just like C and B. So there's no E sharp, there's no F flat. E is right next to F. Then we have an F sharp or G flat, G natural, G sharp or A flat, and then A. And now we're back to the octave. It's the same as the open note of that string. Okay, so now let's do it again on the D string. On the fifth fret, we start on a G. We go up a half step, that's an A flat or a G sharp. Then we have A. Then we have an A sharp or a B flat. Then we have a B. And then B and C are right next to each other again. Those are the just like E and F, B and C. So C is the next note here. Then we have a C sharp or a D flat. And then we have a D. And now we're up to the octave again. Now we'll do the same thing on the G string. We start on the fifth fret, and that's the note C. C, C sharp or D flat, D, D sharp or E flat, E. Then we have the F is right next to it. Strange relationship, right? Then we have F sharp or G flat, and then we end up with G. Now, now you have learned all the notes all the way across the whole first octave of the bass neck. Now, I understand you have to practice this and you have the chart and that's something you need to do on your own and go over it and over it and over it and practice it until you just have it memorized. But here are some tricks to moving around the neck quickly. And in a previous lesson, I showed you the octave pattern um, or the octave relationship on the neck. And it's the same everywhere on the bass neck. We, uh, we use the square, the square pattern on the frets. If you go, if you start on a note, let's start on a C and you go up two frets and up two strings, you get the octave. So wherever you are, you can always know where the octave of that note is. So let's say I'm on, on an A here on the E string. I know that if I go an octave up, that's an A. So I can very quickly move into other parts of the bass neck by using this octave relationship and then counting from there. So if, if this is an A, then if I start here, A, A sharp or B flat, B and C. And if I want to, let's say I'm on um, an E right here and I want to go to another E, I can go up two frets over two strings and I've got the octave of the E. And then from there, E, F, F sharp, G. So that's just a handy tool to get you moving around the neck quicker. We, we also can use the octave on the same string. So if I hit the open E and then I hit up at the 12th fret, which usually has the two dots on your neck that you can see, 
that's an octave. Then from there, I can move an octave by going over two frets and two strings. Now I'm on an E here. So now I'm way up the neck, and I know exactly what note I'm on pretty quickly. So anywhere you're at, you can use the octave pattern to get to a higher part of the neck. And then, you know, gradually as you practice this over and over again, you're going to get a more comfortable idea of where the notes on the neck are. Somebody says, play an E. Boom. You know where the E is. Somebody, plays, somebody says, play an F. Well, it's right next to it. A high F. You can hop up the octave. It makes it a lot easier. Somebody says, play a high G. Well, you know that the open string is a G. And all the way up on the 12th fret is another G. That's the octave. You can go right to it. And then from there, you can count up. G, A flat, A, B flat, B, C. Then I can hop down. Down two strings and down two frets. And I'm back on C again. Back down to C here. This relationship will be the foundation that you use to build scales and build scales all around the, the neck of the bass so that you can play music all up and down. You can, you know, you, you're not limited on a range of being down here on the lower part of the neck. You can very easily move to the upper part of the neck and play the same patterns and get more sounds out of your instrument. So I want you to take the chart that you have with all the notes listed out do a lot of practicing, use your octave relationship to move around the neck quickly, and know what note you're on. Um, probably one of the easiest ways to do this when you're practicing is call the note out that you're playing. Now, I understand, you know, there's a, what do you call it, a D flat or a C sharp. Eh, just pick one of them, but always call it out as you're practicing this. Call out the note. E, E, D, C sharp, C, G, F sharp, F. Always know where you're at, and this will really help you as you progress in your technique and your playing.